Tofts International Arena in Valkensvar played host to the 12th leg of the Longines Global Champions Tour. The epicenter of show jumping in Europe welcomed 23 Olympic athletes over the four-day festival of jumping in the Netherlands, just days before the start of the Rio Games. Fans and international VIPs packed the arena to get their final glimpse of the best riders in the world before heading to the Olympics. Last year saw German rider Marco Kutcher win the Grand Prix in the new Tops International Arena, unveiled as part of the Global Champion Tour's 10th year celebrations. This year, the leading rider has returned to Valkenswald to defend his title. The facilities are very good, the horses are jumping well, and so the jumps are big. Uh, and technical and uh, most of the best riders are here and horses so it will be a tough Grand Prix tomorrow. The previous round in Estoril saw Italian Pierre Giorgio Bucci shine with a stunning win in front of ecstatic fans. Australian Edwina Tops Alexander finished second with Lintia Tequila and Ireland's Bertram Allen took third with his nine-year-old stallion Hector van Dabdehoven. Edwina's result had shot the two-time champion of champions to the top of the rankings where she sat on 234 points overall. Former leader Christian Ahlmann was a nail-biting two points away and poised to regain the lead as the battle continues this season. Rolf Jorang Bengtsson slipped to third, but still on 200 points. And Bertram Allen's result in Qashqai's pushed him back up the order to fourth, just 11 points behind the top three. The Tops International Arena in Valkensvard has become a mecca for leading show jumpers from all over the world. And with just days before he travels to Brazil, two-time Olympic team gold medalist McLean Ward knows what it takes to prepare for the Games and made the trip from the USA to Europe for the season, with Rio firmly in his mind. My dad was a Grand Prix rider before, competed internationally, World Cup finals, uh, rode for the team a bit. My mother was also professional, turned amateur again uh, later in life, and uh, so it was a horse background, and horses right from the beginning. In America, we start on pony hunters. It's a little bit different than Europe. Um, I was terrible. I was really bad. Uh, and then we have uh, what we call equitation, which is about the style of riding, and things started to get better, and then graduated to jumpers. And it's been a long road, ups and downs, but uh, I'm in a good place uh, at this point in my career, and uh, certainly all those experiences added to it. McLean is not alone in his rise to the top. It takes an army to get where we are and to be successful and uh, not only just influences in a large way but also in a small way and, and a lot of people to help. I never really set uh, number one in the world as a, as a goal and obviously I didn't stay there very long uh, but it's a nice uh, accolade along the way you know it shows that you've been consistent against your peers and it certainly was a nice moment. Um, but I, I think uh, Olympic gold medal is, is the pinnacle for most people. As show jumping continues to grow, Europe is still considered the heart of the sport. Uh, we have a really growing sport in North America between Spruce Meadows and Wellington and Tryon and all these different large events, which is great. Um, but I think it's nice to come to Europe and test your skills against the world's best, see where you are in the sport, uh, see how you add up, uh, and, and certainly highlight events uh, such as the Global Tour, Balkansvard, Aachen, you know, those are always special places. Balkansvard provides the perfect test before he bids for that so far elusive individual Olympic gold. We've been planning this with HH Azure for over 18 months. Things have to go your way. You have to, to stay away from injuries or, or unexpected circumstances. I think it's nice to, to keep competing and just feel like you're in a groove before heading off. You know, I think the team is very special, um, but I've been lucky to be part of some great teams who have helped me a great deal. I think the Olympic gold medal, individual medal, is a pinnacle in the sport. If you have one of those, you're, you're amongst a handful of the very best that ever did it. That's really the key. All the top riders really can, on any given day, uh, win. You know, what really separates us is the machine underneath us. I think there's a handful of people that, uh, that can certainly win it and some, some very strong horses. It has to be a little bit your day and maybe the course has to suit your horse a little bit. I feel that, you know, as a team and as an individual, if we do our job, I think we'll be in the mix.
I kind of think I'm running out of time to win an individual medal, so, you know, unlike Bertram Allen, you know, he's got a few more chances than me, so I got to get on it. Uliano Bezzani's first round course was a true test for 49 of show jumping's best. With seven of the world's top ten taking part in the 1m60 Grand Prix, the hugely passionate local crowds of Valkensvard were on the edge of their seats. The big track delivered early drama, with poles rolling and tough distances, with the bicycle fence proving a particular challenge to many combinations. The first clear came from American Lauren Hoff. She's done the six strides, that's the first one who's done that, and absolutely no problem at all. The horse has still got the, the ability to take that extra stride and make the jump. Some horses lose the jump when you, when you take, take a check. Look at that, easy five. Yeah, really, really nice there, 77 in seven. And there's our first clear for the USA, Lauren Hoff, and ooh la la. Could Leopold Van Aston be the first Dutch rider to go clear? Well, quite often the way we wait for a while, we see two in a row. It's clear for Leopold van Aston, VDL Group side aim, uh, 78.32. Into the ring, Jessica Springsteen and her nine-year-old Grey sign R5. Six strides so easy down here. And should make the four strides to the last if she can get a nice turn and, and jump at this one. Had a little look at the water. Well, yeah. well ridden that was. Olympic rider Michael van der Vleuten did not disappoint the fans, but the course still proved problematic with more riders struggling to get that elusive clear. It has a bit of a style of its own, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It really kind of twists. And I suppose you get used to that, though. But just where he needed it, just superb on those last two fences. Current championship leader Edwina Tops Alexander entered the ring just two points between the top two. So competitions like this are uh, really important to her. Yeah, she's so consistent, really, with the, with the global tours. The one in uh, Miami with Lintia Takia. This horse has got so much ability. Must have been a bit of a tough decision, really, whether which horse to take to the Olympics. Yeah, I think it would have been. Because this one has got oodles of scope. But Lintia Takia is uh, my favorite ride and uh, definitely her best horse this season. I'm sure there was lots of discussion about that. Comes down though, jumps a super round there. Edwina Tops Alexander Cartina. So she jumps clear, 79.84. The new world number one, Christian Alman, was set on regaining his place at the top of the rankings before heading to Rio. Horse that finished third in Hamburg, fourth in Mexico City, third in Miami Beach. Probably one of the most consistent horses on the circuit. It is Eat Lisa. 12 year old, buy for pleasure. The, you know, the triple bar, it just shows you so many poles in it. It's difficult to know which one actually falls, but um, right, let's quite see how he managed to do that. Back bar came off the officer coming into the double there as well. Real shame because normally, as I said, this horse is really consistent, but I think he might just call it a day here. McLean Ward entered the arena. He's won him a lot of money this horse this year. Of course, part of that double H team. Well, he reached number one this world. We've had a bit of a change around with uh, number, uh, number one rankings we had uh, stopped for so long uh, staying there and this year we've had a bit of a chop around with Simon de Lest, Christian Arland and Clayne Ward. We uh, just caught that early fence which is a bit annoying for McLean. Yeah real shame of course he currently sits uh, number five in the world right now. He's conscious of the time and really wants to try to make that top 18. So he's really motoring on he's going to sort of flip this corner and try to press down on that four strides, get through the finish. And he's fast at the expense of the last fence. And it's all over for McLean for, for this uh, Grand Prix. Could last year's winner retain his crown? So finished top 10 for him in Paris and uh, second in the Grand Prix of Shanghai this year. 
just has the first part down coming into the combination. Yeah, got a real chance into that Oxa. And, uh, yeah, good time. Yeah, 75-81. Finishes on the four faults, so goes into 11th place there. Out to get to the top of the overall rankings, Rolf Jorn Benson. 34 points behind uh, Eguna Tops Alexander, who's at the top. 32 points behind Christian Armin, world number one, who sits in second. Look at that, very relaxed Super. on the fourth ride. You've seen a lot of pushing and, and elbows, but uh, Rolf Jürgen just could easily just sit there for the fourth ride and let Nassau just jump that. Dutch Olympic team member Harry Smolders, who chose to come here as his last crucial preparation for Rio. Really nice through that combination. Yeah, I think if you're clear to this stage, you'll be holding your breath down that final line. Yeah. Oh, it looked a little bit at that water tray. Big powerful oxa. Oh, and it's the little skinny vertical that comes down. 76 70. Four faults there for Harry Smolder. One of the most experienced Olympians, Ludger Beerbaum, took to the arena. To Luca Beerbaum's yard in 2011. Really useful horse has been for Luca. They have the 2013, I think it was, European team silver medal together. It's always a great rider to watch, Luca. Yeah, he really, you know, normally so consistent. You know, it's just the last couple of shows. And we saw at Hickstead he didn't have to jump the Nations Cup and then uh, had a couple of rails in the, in the King's Cup and um, you know, just, we were so accustomed to seeing him jump clear. And that's exactly what he's done today. Certainly is. And push Scott Brash out of this uh, second round. Lauren Hoff and Ola La were the early pace setters. The first combination to jump clear and fastest initially in a time of 77.87 seconds. She was joined by home riders Michael van der Vleuten and Leopold van Aster. LGCT ranking leader Edwina Tops Alexander also put in a strong performance to keep her hopes of a third Champion of Champions title alive. Laura Rennick and Bintang too also looked to be on positive form with a careful clear, as did up and coming American Jessica Springsteen and Sinar 5. A total of 11 riders jumped cleanly, with seven through on the quickest of the four faults. The Global Champions Tour provides an unparalleled environment for riders to compete against the greatest names in the sport. With the Olympic Games a matter of days away, 23 Olympic athletes flock to Valkenswald for their final five-star show before Rio. Uh, this is a fantastic and great show to be. So we all want to be here, compete. And this is our last chance to compete before we are all flying out in the beginning of the week to Rio. I think you stay in the rhythm, you stay in the show rhythm. Uh, that's very important, I think, to, to do it every week again. So you're not surprised about times and rhythms and in the course. And that's, that's really good to keep up. Valkenswald is a, a fantastic show here. Uh, it's good to, to measure the level again. I think there's so many top riders here and it's also good for the rider himself to keep, on the, to keep motivated and to stay strong to get in the high level here and, and try to, to be good here as well just in, before the Olympics. I think it's also good that we do some other shows before that we don't stay too focused on, on that one show, you know. It's, uh, I think it's good to, to be busy also with some other horses just to to be somewhere else with your mind. To give yourself the best preparation in time and not to have such a big gap uh, in between and to put yourself a little bit in that same atmosphere and uh, I think we have most of the top ten here as well. So um, yeah, no, it's um, great to just be able to get on the plane on Sunday and get straight into it. Timing is everything for the star-studded field of riders as gold fever is on everyone's minds. The Grand Prix of Valkensvard is the ultimate test to stay focused and get into the Olympic spirit. Some year you may not have a horse, not get picked in the team for your country, cannot go and then you have to wait another four years to have the chance to maybe go and uh, you feel great when you've done it and then 
the next few times when you're coming back. You want more than compete and be there, you want also to be as good as possible. But I think really the Olympic Games or taking part at the Olympic Games is the, the ultimate achievement really in any sport. Every time it has been really a special uh, feeling, emotion and also uh, the focus to the preparation is more than, than to any normal show. I think it's everybody's ambition to win it. I think that's about as high as you can get in a, you know, Olympic medal. I don't think you get much better than that, can you? I'm really excited. It's a dream. When, when I was a kid, uh, it was my dream to go one time in the, in the Olympic. I'm, a, I'm really lucky that uh, all this year I, I did a lot of uh, global champion tour and uh, I practice uh, on the, the global for, to prepare my horse for the Olympic. I hope I'm ready for, for that. We will really see you next week. Germany has won more Olympic show jumping titles than any other country. Will the Global Champions Tour hold the clues to this year's gold medal winners? We are really motivated with number one or without and we really try uh, to make it in the team or later uh, in the individual uh, competition. So um, we are motivated and hopefully well prepared. Now we have a great team. We have the same group of riders we had at the WEG. Uh, BZ Madden has been you know, our, our anchor for many years and really has an incredible resume at championships. Uh, Lucy Davis is a younger rider who's been very hot as of late and, and Kent and I, his careers have been uh, somewhat going together and, and I, I think successful enough, I hope. Um, so I'm excited about the team. I think on paper we have a very good chance, but things have to come off on the moment and things have to go your way and I think we're just going to try to focus on each day and uh, we'll see where we finish in the end. I think we have as good a chance as anybody. It's going to be difficult to win this, the five or six really strong teams. But we're in there with a shout. We beat them, you know, regularly. So why can't we beat them in Olympics? Yeah, I think we have a really strong team. Uh, if you see all these riders uh, at the moment, three of them under the top ten, and Lutka is not far behind it. I think there are also a couple of very good nations and uh, even the other countries they get stronger and stronger and I think it will be a hard fight. Who's going to win I can't tell you but uh, I wouldn't mind if we are staying on top. <laughs> the second round was met with clear skies and sharp shadows as the late afternoon sun started to give way to twilight. The Uliano Vetsani course again was extremely challenging even for such a high caliber field. Poles toppled all over the course with four falters looking to be the fastest in the group. First to get a double clear were the talented combination of Jessica Springsteen and Sinar 5, to the delight of Bruce and Patty Springsteen. She was soon joined by Alberto Zorzi and Edwina Tops Alexander. Luca Beerbaum and Chiara look set to make round two until they agonizingly clip the final fence. Oh, it's gone! Final fence, what a shame. But that was not to be the case for Laura Kraut. Flies over that final fence, 76-77, and it's clear there. It was not to be Laura Renick's day with Vin Tang, or indeed home hero Michael van der Vluten, dashing the hopes of a local win. Rob John Bengtson and Casal Ars showcased their experience and partnership, jumping double clear quickest of all to take pole position in the jump off, before being pushed down to second fastest after Lauren Hoff and Ola La hit their time to earn pride of place as last to go. Yes, makes it look easy. The jump off is set to be a sensational conclusion to the Grand Prix of Valkensvaard, with American Lauren Hoff sitting in the crucial last position of the six-horse finale. First into the ring, Jessica Springsteen had all to play for. It's amazing, there's so many people here watching on, but suddenly the stadiums just went absolutely yeah, silent. Yeah, hear a pin drop. Quick back to this Oxa. Oh, look at the space that gave. That's a tricky line, isn't it, from the Oxa left-handed across to there? Yeah, it's, it's sort of jump off. You've got to just keep keep moving all the way. Slid off really nicely into that double. Uh, spin back. Into the shadows. Oh, got very tight on the seven strides, but got away with it and got inside. Now she's got to really let it go to the last. Big gallop down here to the final line. 
clears the last fence. What a superstar. That's a fantastic round. Alberto Zorzi beat the time of 43.79. If anyone can take on that challenge, it's only going to be by a stride. It's not going to be by a lot. Done eight strides between those two fences. Already up on a, up by a second at this early stage, but I think there's areas where you might have to take a check. And yeah, he looks like he, he was a bit slower to that double. It's a slightly awkward line, isn't it? There's a bush in the way, and it's very difficult to know whether they come inside it. Very tight back to that. And this one's up. Seven strides, the same as Jessica, to that fence. He's quicker. He's got a really push. He's quicker. 4379 to the shadows and into the light and he's yes. done it. Yes. 42. That's a super round there. Really is. Could ranking leader Edwina Tops Alexander take the top honours at her training base? 4253 is the challenge. So eight strides across here. Yep. Now inside. She's come inside that. I think that's that's the, that's the way the to go it, yeah. They've got to take that. Uh, oh, it's gone. And paid the penalty. It gives you a very, very sharp angle into that double. Yeah, all about risk and reward here. But they know they've got to take every risk. Would she have been quick enough? I don't know, 42-53, uh, it was the challenge laid down as she clears the final fence at 43-02, so not far away. Laura Kraut needed to beat Alberto's time of 42.53 to claim the lead. You've got to really nail it from the beginning. Yeah, for the first and the second round, I think your plan kind of stays the same, but in the jump off, once you've seen a couple go... Yeah, she did nine strides there, that's quicker. A couple of tenths. But taking an extra one to that fence. Put inside. Beautifully through that, got away with it. Half a second up on the clock. Now she's got to press and go. That was a real good turn there. She's dropped a little bit of time now, about a tenth of a second between them. Yeah, but that's a quick turn. Go on, Laura. Go, go, go. She's got a gallop. She's got a push. She's got a really wide dive. Oh, she's, she's done it. Here's the last. This is quick. Farsi 153. An absolute challenge. All eyes turn to Rolf Jan Benson. It's not over, you know. It really isn't. That's where he needs to be. Oof. He's done the eight strides there, so he's bit quicker I think he's gone round the bush and that might not be any slower actually because he can keep moving yeah, it's a big open horse this one oh had a little rub into the double but got away with it he is up by almost a second as he rolls back into here handbrake turn this is quicker this is where Laura was quick though she's lost a little bit he's using a little bit of the stick he's got to go let's see if he can take one out he's, he's standing to... off it Oh, this is close. Has oh, he's done it. <laughs> he has. Farsi 136 doesn't get much closer than that. It was all down to final rider Lauren Hoff from the United States. This is American riding at its best. So fleet footed this horse. Might take extra strides, you've got to ignore that. It's just pure nimbleness with this horse. It's early on, but she's three tenths of a second faster. Now this will actually be quick on the turn. Look at that. Yeah, really like a little whippet. Oh! oh. Ah, a confirmed win there for Rolf Gorin Banksy. It was a clash of the titans for the Global Champions Tour of Valkensvaar, with 20 Olympic riders amongst the world's best battling it out before heading to Rio. Rolf Jan Benson showed he was on top form, taking the top spot, with Laura Kraut in second, and Italian Alberto Zorzi taking third place. Just missing out on the podium was young American rider Jessica Springsteen, holding her own amongst the best riders in the world. I was great, as a Casal ask again, he has shown his quality here on and on again. This age, still have this fun and joy to jump. You have to give everything in the jump off because I knew that Lauren Huff was going to be behind me and her horse is even faster. But 
she has to take risks to beat me and this time I was still a big one. You have a good feeling now when you <laughs> end up the show before the games in, uh, in this position. But it's a, new, it's a new game and we go on from the beginning and that's life. Edwina tops Alexander keeps hold of her overall ranking lead with a tally of 265 points overall. However, Rolf Joran Bengston is nail-bitingly close and has shot up to second following today's win, where he now sits on 240 points overall. Just eight points away and breathing heavily down the leader's necks is world number one, Christian Allman. The tour now looks to the beautiful city of Rome in Italy for round 13 of the 2016 Longines Global Champions Tour season.